The Pistons dropped their 16th straight game to the New York Knicks, but there might be reasons for hope. Welcome back to Pearson's Intellect. I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore 313. And if you're feeling so kind, please hit that subscribe button before we get into today's show. Uh, mean the world to me. Been loving all the comments, everyone engaging, sharing our thoughts on this team and getting through this tough time as a whole. So uh, if you're feeling so kind, hit that subscribe button. But for today's show we're going to break down and recap the detroit pistons 16th consecutive loss at the hands of the new york knicks the pistons fall by six points 112 118 to the knickerbockers at madison square garden and as disappointed as i am right now fresh off watching the game i think i feel a sense of haven't felt this sense of kind of calmness or just this have this little bit of hope after watching that performance uh i mean the pistons came out poorly monty williams elected to bench Jaden ivy once again which i don't get but i don't i'm gonna get that in the next segment but the Pistons came out with a starting lineup of Killian Hayes, Kay Cunningham, Isaiah Livers, Isaiah Stewart, and Jalen Duran. And they were horrible in the first quarter. They got down 17 to 31. Uh, Jalen Ivey didn't play a minute, uh, couldn't hit a shot. Cade had nine points and was aggressive early. He started the game with a transition dunk, um, which I thought was good to get him rolling. Nice and early, easy bucket. And yeah, but from there on, the first quarter was kind of what we've seen in the past. Poor spacing, guys hesitant to shoot. Um, just all the things we've gotten used to. Marcus Sasser, Alec Burks, Kevin Knox, Marvin Bagley, and uh, sorry, the last name just gave me a bit. All check in before Jaden and Ivy. And things were looking bad, but then the second quarter came around and Marcus Sasser, in many ways, I feel like the Pistons were down by 16 in the second and he steadied the ship. He hit like four threes. It was kind of his second quarter was kind of reminiscent of that Bucks game where he just went off, um, and he got the Pistons just kept the offense humming uh, and allowed the Pistons to get back into this one. Uh, and Jaden Ivey also played in the second quarter, um, didn't do a whole lot, but in his five minute stretch he was plus seven and kind of helped the team. But Caden Killian also got cooking. Killian just had a terrific game, probably his best game of the season. Maybe you could say. His game against the Warriors was better, but tonight he had 23 points, four assists, three rebounds. But most importantly, 10 of 13 from the field, two of three from beyond the arc. And yeah, his shot just looked money tonight. Um, He made every shot he needed to make. uh, And it just felt like he was in the right spots, right time, played some good defense. And I think the biggest takeaway tonight was, I'm not sure if Killian's a starter, I think it should be Ivy, but the one thing, no matter what, you can't say about the Killian Hayes move and you can't say a negative thing about it was Killian handling more on-ball reps and having Cade off-ball. It worked. Cade, I haven't seen him take this many wide-open catch-and-shoot threes. There was a beautiful one in the second quarter where I think it was Killian through this beautiful skip pass all the way across to the opposite corner in front of the Knicks bench and Cade was... I haven't seen him that open <laughs> for a while, drain the three. Uh, and, yeah, just seeing Kate off ball was was really nice to see. And I think him and Killian played really well tonight. I think if you go back to the 2021 draft when the Pistons took Kate Cunningham, this is probably what Troy Weaver envisioned of that backcourt. Now, that hasn't panned out. But, I mean, just getting Kate off ball, I think, is, is such a, a good thing. And, um I mean, Cade finished with 31 points, eight assists, 12 of 20 shooting, four of nine from deep. And for three and a half quarters, he was excellent. Uh, he made every shot he needed to make. He was playing more off ball. He was cutting. Um, just a really balanced, awesome Cade game for three and a half quarters. Uh, and 
I mean, you combine that with Marcus Sasser, and I think those three were excellent tonight. Sasser keeps the team going in the second. Killian and Kate kept the Pistons within the game, got them leads at certain points throughout the third quarter. Um, and, yeah, those three were the standouts for me uh, by far, just in terms of their shot making. And, um, look, Marcus Sasser is never going to be the best playmaker. He's a two in a one's body. But when he's hitting shots like that and – also, I thought his defense was pretty good. Like, obviously, he's undersized, and him getting switched on to Julius Randle wasn't ideal, clearly. But I don't think that's fully on Sasa. Like, I feel like there's a switching scheme going on, similar to Dwayne Casey, and that's on the coaching staff. So um, I thought those three were excellent tonight. Uh, I think it is worth bringing up, though, K did have the seven turnovers and, honestly, the last five minutes turning the K to ISO ball, which we just know by now is bad offense, flat-out bad offense. And I think if anything, we saw tonight, K should be used more, way more off ball, way more off ball. He's not Luka Doncic. He's not these helocentric guys. We thought maybe he was that in his rookie season, maybe last season, maybe even the start of this season, but he's just not that. So, I mean, the Pistons close as well with a questionable lineup. They take out Jaden Ivey um, and they bring in, they close with the starting group, which struggled to open the game and yeah after being at neck and neck the pistons got down by as many as nine with like three minutes to play and game over and that was my one biggest gripe of monty williams was i didn't like the starting lineup but look the team got back into it they're within striking range the entire game after the first quarter and then you bring in Stu and livers at the end who both had pretty poor games and all the onus goes right back on Cade to do everything. And some of this is on Cade, but to be honest, like Killian's just not a guy down the stretch who's going to get you a good shot because he can't get to the rim. And, I mean, I'll get to this in the Jaden Ivey segment, but I thought the combination of Ivy, Killian, and Cade look really good. There's a lot of dynamic players in there. Cade's obviously like in between a shot creator and a playmaker. Killian more playmaker, but when he's hitting his shots, man, he's a good off guard. And then Jaden's just that burst of energy who can get to the rack and when he's allowed more playing time and has the ball more, um, he can make things happen and collapse defences. So maybe this is something I really want to monitor and I hope Monty Williams uses that three-guard lineup a bit more going forward. It's the only three-guard lineup I want to see, by the way, um, because of the size and dynamic sort of versatility they have. But I think Kate at small forward, who knows? He's a six, six, seven foot wingspan, tad on the size. If he actually commits to the defensive end at the three and isn't handling the ball as much, maybe that is his role going forward. I mean, what's I don't think his handle is good enough right now, and he's very turnover prone to be your lead guard. What's wrong with him sharing ball handling duties with the other guys? Look good tonight. And he got it felt like he got more open shots tonight. I'm sure if I look at the data, he probably got as many um, open catch and shoots potentially, but it just felt like the shots were open and he was in rhythm a lot more receiving passes from Killian Hayes. So I don't know. Killian needs to prove – well, sorry, the Killian we know will not do this in two, three games time. He might have a good game next game. He might have three in a row, but – I think whether Killian starts or not, whether Jaden Harvey starts or not, that is a three-guard lineup you can fall back on when things aren't working offensively, and that's a positive for me. So I want to get to now kind of the next thing, which is a positive and a negative, and that is what is going on with Jaden Harvey. I think this is my biggest gripe with Monty Williams right now. Like, I get Jaden wasn't great last game. He has in foul trouble. But he'd been playing excellent before. And this is where it comes down to is there something going on behind the scenes we don't know about? Because not only do you not start him, like as much as that annoys me, like I've said I'm cool. If you're not going to start him, just play him 25 minutes. Like you cannot play Jaden Ivey without Kate Cunningham like they did for stretches of the first half. Like you need to know what you have with these two. Like especially while you're losing, like you're not even, this is a bigger conversation because tonight was, well, no, it's not actually, it's just like you need to know what you have. You've invested two top five picks in these guys. Like you cannot just play Jaden 
what did he play tonight? 13 minutes. Like, unless there is something we do not know about going on behind the scenes, it just baffles me each and every time. And yes, Jaden is not perfect, but there is no perfect player on this roster. There's absolutely zero perfect players on this roster. If they're good at defense, they're bad at offense. If they're good at offense, they're bad at defense. If they're okay at offense, they're okay at defense. There is no one on this team who is thriving and prone to not making errors. And that is what is really frustrating with this Jaden Ivey thing. Because you take him out in that fourth quarter when, like I just mentioned, that three-guard lineup was looking really good with Isaiah Livers and Jalen Durant. Like, they were looking good. They were making plays happen. I know there's that switching thing. Ivy was getting switched on to Randall, but I'm just willing to bet on the offense more right now because the defense of talent isn't there. Like, it's not there. Jalen Duran might be half injured, but his pick and roll defense, I hate to say it, but it's been atrocious in drop coverage. Whether it's giving up like pick and pop threes, dropping too low, like he's, I don't want to bash Jalen Duran because he might be injured, but his defense is just. I don't know. And maybe that's why Stu's out there and this this is the thing. But I think you've just got to lean into offense, especially tonight when those three guards were looking so good together. And it's not like Jaden was gassed. He played like eight, uh, 11 minutes or whatever. Like just close with him. He made a huge big time three. He sends him down six and he drains a three in the face of his defender at least a foot or two behind the line. They bring the Pistons within three and then you take him out not long after. And it was just fitting like the Pistons, they end up getting down with livers and stewing. And it was just so fitting because Cade would dribble. There was one where he kicked it to the corner opposite the Pistons bench. Stu misses a wide open three. And then a bit later in the game, kicks it to the Isaiah livers in front of the Pistons bench, air balls a wide open three. And livers is a much better shooter, but it's just like, it just kind of felt fitting to me. Um, you take out a guy who makes a big time three to keep you in the game and is thriving with the rest of the players on the court, and you bring in one or two guys. You bring in Stu, who misses a key three, and then Livers, who just. I mean, the funny thing is, I think Livers should still be starting, but like he, you know, like he missed an easy floater tonight, missed his fair share of threes. Yeah, it just was fitting to me. And I don't know what's going on with Jaden Ivey. The more this happens, the deeper it goes into the season, the more I'm. I'm very fearful that Jaden Ivey is potentially going to be moved and he's not in the franchise's plans, or at least Monty Williams. I don't agree with that. <laughs> because I just think Cade is just flat out better when Jaden Ivey's on the court and you should be wanting to do everything you can to make your prime, your key piece look at his best. So, yeah, man. I don't know. You look at the box score, Jaden Ivey, it doesn't look that impressive because he only played 30 minutes, but he's a plus four. And... Anyone who says he didn't contribute to winning tonight didn't watch the game. So he should have finished that game for me. And that is the first time I've been extremely frustrated with a Monty Williams coaching decision. And I'm not giving him the benefit of the doubt that, yeah. I'm sure the reason he brought Stu in was to help with defense, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It feels like this team, like you plug one hole, another one opens up. Offense tonight's looking good. Just roll with the offense. Like, this offense has looked horrific for the most part, and it actually was looking functional tonight. And then you take out a key offensive piece to bring in a defensive piece, and it doesn't work. So, I don't know. Hopefully, Monty learns from that. Hopefully, he saw something in that three-guard lineup tonight. But I think this just brings me to the final point that I want to close on. And this one hurts me. No, it, it like... And I don't actually care, but it hurts me because I was big on Stuart the four. I don't care that I was wrong. I couldn't give a fuck that I was wrong. Sorry to swear. But I just think it's time to end Stuart the four. And I just don't think the Pistons have time. Like the Pistons don't have time in their developmental arc as a team to try and continue to play Stuart the four. He had multiple turnovers tonight. And if he wasn't turning it over, he was fumbling it, trying to dribble it inside the key. I love Stu one of my favorite players, but you know, like obviously that does not matter at all. No one cares about that. Um, but I say that to say like, I am happy to admit defeat on this. I was wrong. I don't think the Pistons have time to be trying this anymore. Not when you've lost 16 games, like you just got to 
you got to end that. Put him at the backup five. He will thrive there. I know he's not the lob threat Marvin Bagley is, but he's a damn good defender and rebounder. Like, can you imagine him against Isaiah Hartenstein tonight? Like, as a backup five, he like Hartenstein wouldn't be able to handle Stu. Like, and Hartenstein's a really nice offensive backup center, but I just like Stu can outmuscle him, and he would have. Like that's that's the type of matchup Stu can thrive in coming off the bench, especially if he's going to hit threes. And I just feel like he's under less pressure coming off the bench. Like I feel like he would be in his own head now. He's had a few bad games of tough shooting. I know he shot okay against the Lakers, but he's clearly that forty percent. Like that that's dipped. That's gone now. Um, I think yeah, time for Stu to go to the bench. His defensive switchability and stuff is at its best when he's at the five and he can switch on the guards and the pick and roll. Um, especially when you have bigger guys like Thompson, uh, Cade, and um, Livers, who can all switch. If teams try and put those guys in the pick and roll with Stu, like you can just do so much there, especially against bench lineups. And look, he can still close games, Stu. I think he's gonna be if he's coming off the bench, there's gonna be so many games he's closing because I think he's just a winning player in the right role, and he's not in the right role. And I was I was wrong. Happy to put my hand up. I thought he could play at the four, but I mean. With the way this team's going, you just don't have time to try that anymore. You need to optimize your three to four best players, and we all know who the core four is. Figure out if that can work, and you got to optimize that. I think you can optimize those four with Streakham off the bench, not with him as a starter. So I think that'll do for today's show, guy. guys. Sorry. Uh, I don't think I'll be back now until the Pistons' next game, which, one second, I'll just pull it up, but I don't believe it is until... Saturday night, who do they have? Let's see. We are just checking now. Okay, they play the Cavs at home. I'll be back for that game. Let me know below your thoughts, your comments. I'm not saying tonight was a moral victory. I think for me, I just, you know, I was in that game in the thick of it as a fan, and I'm down so bad right now that I'll take that. Uh, I tweeted out, like, the positives from tonight, some of the negatives. But ultimately for me, if we're going to get that energy effort every night from the players, I'm okay with that now. Like, just okay. I, this is sad still. I am not celebrating this by any stretch of the imagination. I just need to bring some positivity to this show because I can't keep doing the negative stuff. And I've kind of given up on hearing from anyone from the franchise. Um, I think Boyan will be back for next game. So... I think I'll leave you with this, and I want you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you think the Pistons' starting five should be against the Cavs because they're going to have Evan Mobley, Jarrett Allen. I think stuff it, man. I think go. If it's going to be Killian and Cade in the backcourt, I think you honestly just go Livers, Boyan, Duran. But if you want a bit more size, I still don't really like this, but you can maybe put Asar at the three and he guards four and then you just have Boyan starting, uh, um, playing four on offense, three on defense, whatever. You just have those two guard. Um, and you just got to hope Evan Mobley and uh, Jared Allen don't dominate the glass too much. But, yeah, let me know the starting five you want to see. Um, those are my two options. But, yeah, like I said, thank you for tuning in. Loving all the support right now. It actually means the world to me. It's helping me a lot just in these comments. So appreciate all of you. But until Saturday night, go Pistons.